Having established the importance of the activity of the eye, which he, with reference to the old Greek philosophers, called the inner light, Goethe again directed his interest to light and color phenomena in the open air and in particular on the sky. Such as the beautiful so-called coronae, under certain circumstances visible around the full moon and due to water droplets in the atmosphere. A more well-known phenomenon is the rainbow, here painted by Angelica Kaufmann, one of the artists Goethe befriended during his stay in Italy. What is so remarkable with the rainbow? The fact that there is no object that really has the colors, they are just a creation out of the situation, when conditions happen to be right. A rainbow arises through the reflection of the sun in millions of water droplets. The drops themselves are colorless, the sunlight just bright. The most common phenomenon on the sky, however, is the reddening of the setting sun. I usually find it rewarding to look in the opposite direction, to see a corresponding phenomenon, the shadow of night rising at the east horizon. It has a wonderful deep blue tone towards dark violet. We can understand the reddening of the setting sun as an effect of the absorption of the light from the sun when it has to pass a long way through the relatively dense atmosphere close to the surface of the earth, as compared to when the sun shines directly down through it. But how about the blue sky? How does that come about? Well, the atmosphere is transparent but still acts as a fine turbid medium. Because of this, it colors the direct light from the sun, more or less, from yellow to red, but at the same time it itself shimmers in the complementary color, which ranges from dark violet to light blue. This weak blue shimmer is seen when you look through the illuminated atmosphere towards the totally black universe behind. The blue of the heaven and the yellow red of the setting sun thus have the same explanation. They are the two sides of the same phenomenon, so to speak. Actually, the blue of distant mountains is an example of the same phenomenon. If you move over there to the distant mountain, you will find that it looks quite like here in the foreground. Various nuances of green, brown, yellow. But then, isn't this due to the atmosphere acting as a blue filter? No, because in such a case, first and foremost, the snow on the mountains would look blue, not as is the case, white. It is because the mountains are dark that you see the blue. More deep and intense, the darker. Whereas the snow or other white areas would rather get a tendency towards a warm color, yellow, or maybe light brown. There are certain objects, as this egg of turbid glass, that show the same phenomenon. When the sun shines through, the light gets a yellow to red touch, whereas the medium itself shimmers in blue if observed against a dark background. Goethe is happy about all this. One and the same experimental setup results in complementary colors. You couldn't have the blue sky without having also the reddening sun. It seems as if complementarity is a general principle for color appearance. Chemical colors. We give this denomination to colors which we can produce and more or less fix in certain bodies and to which we ascribe a certain permanency. Chemical colors are the colors of stones, flowers, 
insects, birds, etc., as well as of various paints and pigments. I will not go into that chapter now, only give you one example which closely belongs to this survey, namely the augmentation of color, what Goethe calls Steigerung der Farbe. If you fill a white porcelain cup with a pure yellow liquor, the fluid will appear to become gradually redder towards the bottom and at last appears orange. If we pour a pure blue solution into another cup, the upper portion will exhibit a sky blue, that towards the bottom a beautiful violet. Once again, we meet the same series of color we already know from the setting sun and the blue sky, or, as well, the prismatic boundary spectrum.